In this video, we're going to learn about passive infrared motion sensors. These sensors are common in home security systems to detect intruders or to turn on a light when a person enters a room. They can also be used to start a video camera when a person or animal gets near the sensor. Passive infrared sensors, or PIR sensors for short, detect the infrared radiation created by warm objects. The PIR sensor we're going to use in this video is the HCSR501. This plastic dome here is actually a lens. It widens the sensor's field of view so it can detect motion from a wider angle. The lens extends the sensing area to a 110 degree cone in front of the sensor. Underneath the lens is the infrared sensing element. The sensing element is a pyroelectric infrared sensor. We'll get a closer look at how it works in a minute. The HCSR501 only has three pins. There's a pin for VCC, a pin for ground, and a pin for output. When the sensor detects motion, it outputs a high signal. The duration of the high output can be adjusted by turning this potentiometer. This potentiometer adjusts the sensor's sensitivity. The range can be adjusted from about 2 meters up to 7 meters. This is the control chip for the module, the BISS0001. It takes the analog output from the sensing element and converts it into a digital signal. Okay, now let's get a better understanding of how this sensor detects motion. PIR sensors like the HCSR501 detect motion by measuring changes in infrared radiation across the sensor. The sensor element actually has two separate sensing elements. The two sensing elements allow the sensor to differentiate between static sources of IR light, like sunlight, and moving sources like humans and animals. When an IR emitting object crosses the path of the sensor, the first element measures the IR light and generates a high signal. When the object crosses the path of the second element, it generates a low signal. When the BISS0001 detects a large difference between the signals from the two sensing elements, it outputs a high signal. Now let's take a look at how the sensor behaves when it detects motion. To do that, we can connect an LED to the sensor's output pin. You actually don't need an Arduino for this. I'm just using the Arduino as a power source. The output pin of the PIR sensor is connected to the anode of the LED. The cathode of the LED is connected to a current limiting resistor, providing a path to ground. The PIR sensor takes about a full minute to initialize. During the initialization period, the sensor will output false readings. Once the device is initialized, it's ready to detect motion. When I wave my hand in front of the sensor, you can see the LED light up and stay lit up for about 3 seconds. So the output signal remains high for a period of time after motion is detected, even when the motion is no longer present. The duration of the output signal is called the time delay, and it can be adjusted by turning the TX potentiometer. The shortest time delay is about 3 seconds, and the longest is about 5 minutes. Turning the potentiometer clockwise increases the delay, and turning it counterclockwise decreases the delay. The sensitivity or range of the sensor is adjusted with the SX potentiometer. Turning it clockwise decreases the range, and turning it counterclockwise increases the range. One useful application of PIR sensors is using it to turn on lights when someone enters a room. 5V relays let you control high voltage devices like lights and appliances with sensors like this one. In this next example, we're going to use the output of a PIR sensor to control a 5V relay. I won't go into detail about how 5V relays work right now, I just want to show you how to use them with a PIR sensor. This is the 5V relay. 
And here's the PIR sensor. Both the PIR sensor and the 5 volt relay need a 5 volt power supply. Both modules also need a ground connection. The output of the PIR sensor connects to Arduino pin 10. The input pin of the 5 volt relay connects to Arduino pin 12. The terminals over here are where we connect the high voltage supply. The relay is going to act as a switch between these terminals. Okay, now let's look at the Arduino sketch. First we declare a pin variable for the PIR sensor's output and set it equal to digital pin 10. Then we declare a pin variable for the 5 volt relay's input pin and set it equal to pin 12. In the setup section, we set the pin mode of the sensor pin to input and the pin mode of the relay pin to output. Then in the loop, we take a digital read of the sensor pin and store the result in a local variable called value. Then we digital write the relay pin with the value stored in the relay pin variable. So when the output of the PIR sensor is high, which means that motion is detected, the relay pin will be written high as well. That will activate the relay and turn on whatever is connected to it. Let's upload this and see if it works. So here's the relay, and here's the PIR sensor. I don't have anything connected to the high voltage terminals of the relay. But you can see when it's activated by this LED here. So when I wave my hand over the PIR sensor, the relay is activated. It stays activated for the length of the time delay. If you're using this for a motion activated light, you want to use a longer time delay. That way the PIR sensor will keep getting triggered while people are in the room. So the light will stay on the whole time. In the next video, we're going to look at another infrared sensor. But these IR sensors are used to detect solid objects like walls, which makes them perfect for obstacle avoidance systems in remote controlled vehicles. The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.